fuck's sake, is my battery really that low? Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I go over tech crap all day long and I have no name for my channel. Today we're gonna to go over how to put together DDWRT on a firebox, so let's get started. All right, so I need to put together another firewall and my last footage got screwed up. So we're gonna kinda of put this together really quick. You know what, fuck it, we'll put it over here. Okay, I'll speak loud just to make sure I can be heard. Um, this is a firebox. This one specifically is an X500. They're all the same. The numbers on them are software differences. Um, this one in particular has a bad switch on the back. It's really hard for me to push this. I know you can't see that in the video. Um, but when I plug in the power and it's going to make a liar out of me, it always does. It doesn't fire up even though the switch is turned on. If I rock it back and forth a little bit, no. Earlier, it uh, it was working. Uh, at least I was able to get it powered on, and then I bumped it, which is good that I bumped it because it told me that I definitely don't want that one in production. So now we're going to take a look at uh, this. Part. Did I bring one out? No. Yeah, we're going to grab this guy off the shelf and just another one. So some of you guys are wondering why I have so many. It's because someone was selling these in bulk on eBay for 600 bucks and I just happened to catch it and I was like, hmm, this seems like a very good investment. So, I grabbed them. I've sold a couple for, you know, 400 each. You know, I tell people that they're refurbished and I put either watch card software back in them or DDWRT or PFSense, depending on what it needs. These things don't really run PFSense that well unless you have a very small image of it and you really don't do anything but firewall and NAT and that's about it. All right, let's fire this guy up. All right, so the first thing here is that the backlight is very dim. I know it's hard to see because of the backlight here, but we also have strong LEDs, which is good. We're getting a boot error right now. That's because there's no CF card in any of these. So if we use the down key, uh, we don't want to use X modem transfer because we're just going to put in a card in there. If we want to load BIOS defaults, that's going to be the next thing I do. Uh, you can go into BIOS settings and change stuff on here. You can change your baud rate. Um, none of this is actually for the software itself. This is just for the initial connection of the console um, to the firebox. But once you start into the software, once it boots the uh, boot manager, you're on a totally different baud rate for this guy. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do uh, BIOS defaults, L for left, set, BIOS clearing, Awesome, so that's cleared. I don't know if you could hear the boot, but that told me that it cycled. Perfect, we're back to boot error, which is good. Normally, not a good thing. So, I'm gonna flip this switch here, and we're gonna grab a screwdriver, and unplug it. I'm going to remove the screws. Two on this side. Don't drop your screws. Uh, if you have ears or rack mount ears on the side, you're going to have to take those off as well. So that's going to be an extra four screws per side, or I've seen them with less. I am getting ready to go up to northern Florida to work on a very large plantation and get them wired up with fiber optics and Wi-Fi and litter it everywhere. It's, I don't want to give wrong acreage because I don't know, but it's, it's a lot. The guy just bought it for several million and uh, he's asked me to come out there and do an assessment of what it would cost. And uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to be running several miles of fiber optic cable and uh, we'll do a whole separate video on that when and if that comes to play. Right, so um, let's move the camera so we can get a better view of the inside of this box and maybe better lighting. All right, you know what? I'm just going to hold it. All right, so my next step, nope, not going to hold it. Setting my GoPro down inside of an open laptop. That is completely dead. Ah, for fuck's sake, the GoPro is telling me I have fucking low battery. Be right back. 
You're a good boy, Giz. Let's go get a battery, Gizmo. Good boy. Alright, Gizmo and I are back. Hopefully that works. Alright, so the first thing I do is I remove the SCSI drive tray. Why? Because you're not going to use it. Gets in the way, it's annoying, and unless you have one of these drives, which I don't even know is compatible with PFSense, because I've never really tried it, and I don't really care, and I've never needed it, because all you ever need is that small, tiny CF card, and if you're storing large amounts of data, you need a different system. For DDWRT, a 4 gig CF card is beyond <clears throat> anything that you're ever going to need to use. Alright, so this, trash. These four screws, trash. I make a good habit because I know these boxes have been around for a while to replace the CR2032 battery that's in these guys. Okay, the other thing I want you to notice, eh, while that's magnetized, is my fingers, while working in this console, have never left the metal of the unit. That's because I'm not wearing an anti-static shock band. So, in order to remain safe with the computer components, I'm keeping myself grounded to the case of the unit at all times. That's keeping me at a zero voltage balance. If I take my hand away from it, <clears throat> now I'm at a differential. So uh, before I touch anything inside there, especially circuitry or even the screwdriver, uh, I make sure that I'm touching the case at all times. So let's toss that battery. Let's get a new one here. All right, again, case, ground, bingo. All right, perfect. So now we have a uh, good card in there. Um, 256 of RAM, standard in these guys. Plenty for DDWRT. It's what we're going to be installing on here. Um, there's no need for what I'm doing with PFSense. And like I said earlier, if you want to install PFSense, get something bulkier. You'll benefit from it in the long run. Um, yeah, all right, so uh, CF cards, where are they? Right, so the other thing that I want to test, and yes, I'm going to do with this with an open box, power switch off at first. Um, anyone else notice that I just put my finger in between the, uh, the 120 lines just after I activated it? I want to make sure that all the, <coughs> the Ethernet ports are active. So I'm going to fire this guy up. I'm going to give it a second to come up. Bing. Bing, fries are done. Right, cool. So we're still getting uh, boot errors, which is fine, because for this test, we don't really need anything. I'm going to take an active Ethernet cable, and by active, it's just plugged into a switch on the other side. I'm going to plug it into each of these ports. I'm making sure that it negotiates at 100 megabits per second, because on the other end, it's gigabit, which it'll negotiate down to the lowest, well, the fastest, I should say. So I'm just going to make sure that all of these ports are active and that I'm getting an LED light on these, because, again, all of these were out in the field and use now this doesn't mean that the port is good this merely means that the network card is able to negotiate a link speed all right the other thing we're going to look for all right power off because i don't need you anymore is capacitors so these are not solid state capacitors and so we want to make sure that none of them are exploding bursting or starting to dry out and we can do that with a visual test for the most part. So none of these are bulging, which is perfect. That means that this system has not been hit by a surge or has not been under nasty power, uh, amongst many of other things. Um, right, so onto the CF card. Is this recording? It is. Buena Vista. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this guy. I just will turn it into fat, which is fine. Goodbye. Um, all right, so now that we have the card, doesn't need to be formatted. I just do it because I like it, uh, personal preference. You can totally skip it to save yourself time. So if we do disk util uh, list, it's going to list out our disks. Um, the thing that we're looking here is no uh, dev disk three. So that's the important part that we're going to need. So with DDWRT, you can download from. A couple of different images on um, 
on their, their router base. So you can do the public one, which is free, or if you need uh, more connections, which for a home or anything else, um, even a small business, you're probably not gonna be using more than 4,000 uh, TCP connections at the same time. So if we do uh, x86, uh, there we go. So we have serial. We have a serial connection on our on our router, firewall, whatever. Um, so that's the image we're going to use. Serial console image. So we want the one that ends in image dot uh, dot image, not dot bin. Do I want full? No, I'm just going to do public on this one because I don't want to pay the twenty-two dollars. I'm cheap. Uh, serial console image. So this is the one I want to download. It's 11 megabytes. It's version 24. DDWRT public serial dot image. Okay, great. So then we're going to switch back over here. Downloads. And if we ls dd. Perfect. Good job, Ryan. All right, so we have a couple of them. DDWRT uh, public serial image is the one that we just downloaded, so that's one we're going to use. All right, so we're going to use sudo uh, dd yes equals 1m if for input file. So we're going to do this from the root. So users uh, tron downloads dd wrt public serial image so output file is going to be into dev dash disk three yep dev disk three dev disk three resource busy okay so we have to unmount it uh disk detail Perfect. And you can see the light is flashing. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, no, it's done. Right, 11 megs. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I tried to mount it. So we'll ignore this and we'll go back to our disk utility. Yep, so now all the partitions are on here that we needed. So now our CF card's ready to go. All right, guys, so now we're back with our firebox. We have our compact flash card done. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, gently put it in a slot. Again, keeping contact with the frame. Uh, try not to touch as much of the green board as you can. You know, it's just good for it to not have oils on it from your skin or your sweat. Uh, I know I sweat uh, a lot, unfortunately, especially in warm rooms when the AC is off. Uh, so that's it as far as putting the card in there. And uh, let's go ahead and get that cover back on. All right, watch card is together. Oh, that just, oh, that's on the inside. Yep, okay, well, not too worried about it. DDWRT doesn't support the displays anyway, so at least no one's written anything for it. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get it together. Okay, so I'm out of serial cable right now because I don't have the, um, female to female adapter which is fine we'll try it without it um, you know PF sense you have to get in you have to set up uh, the interfaces and set your IPs DDWRT just kind of launches uh, same thing it does in a normal Linksys router um, so you know I'm hoping that I can just plug into this without having to tap into the serial console and let's find out we're going into port 1 because inherently port 0 is your WAN port from default config so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, and I'm going to open my network pane preferences. This is an older Mac. It's not the same Mac that we were just on. That's fantastic. Fuck yeah. Okay, so no need for a serial connection after you set up that compact flashcard, which is awesome sauce. 
Uh, okay, so 192.168.1.1. Yeah, I cheated. I had another take for this. So, if you browse to 192.168.1.1, you will see the change username and password screen. And from there, you should then come up to your first page on DDWRT. So, from here, um, I'll just overview a couple things because there's plenty of other videos out there on DDWRT. Uh, but if you click on the setup tab, uh, you know, this is where you can name your router. You can set your LAN IP address here. This is where the router IP, um, you know, you can change your DHC, uh, DHCP server, what addresses it's going to hand out. I highly suggest changing your time to your correct time zone um, in that you set up an NTP server. This keeps the time correct. It keeps everything in, in sync. And this is good for if you turn on bandwidth logging so you actually get the correct time of days um, and the correct month. So I just use pool.ntp.org. If you want to be more specific, you can just Google uh, NTP pools um, for North America. I'll go ahead and apply this. Perfect. Uh, yeah, from here, um, you know, the other thing that I like to do is enable uh, bandwidth logging on the WAN. Connection type has been disabled. That's fine. All right, so we'll set that up really quick. Uh, connection type is automatic DHCP. Just thinking about it, which is fine. We'll go ahead and apply. All right, so let's go back to status. All right, so this bandwidth uh, graph is just going to show you what's uh, what's going on with your traffic in and out per month. And uh, actually, if I do, I'll log into my actual DDWRT, my active one. So that's just in a couple of days, we're already up to, what, 400, 500 gigs? Uh, that was previous, uh, what is that, two, 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 two terabytes outgoing. Uh, I do live streams into YouTube as well. I think one of the biggest live streams I have is my fish tank, uh, but that's offline because I have this computer right now. But it just basically kind of gives you an overview of what's going on. Um, I like it, I think it's cute. That's about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you like my dog Gizmo, give me another thumbs up. And if you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Let's start over. Let's start over. We're done here.